Hey everyone, um, we are just going to do a quick drive just to see how full self driving does on our mm -hmm. test route too. I didn't really, well I didn't make a video on coming up to my parents. Um, we went all over the place and trying to understand, uh, what am I trying to say? Wait, I went shopping all over the place. Um, so. Yeah, um, so that right there was about the same as the previous update, which is good. However, it's not as good as it was actually. It did creep a little bit better, and I think because of the people standing right there, um, as it's, again, more hesitant when there are pedestrians or VRUs um, hanging around. Okay, we are good to go. Uh, that had pretty good acceleration coming out of here, so that's good. Um, having a little bit of rain, actually, so hopefully it doesn't disable us here. I am actually going to stop past Aldi on this way. It's not. It's just going to be a minor bit out of the way, a little bit of bonus footage, but essentially the route's going to be exactly the same. I will only count disengagements for the main test route and not if, um, if Aldi's has it, just to keep things consistent in our test here. Phantom brake is pretty good. Just strictly, I think it's because of these people that are right here. Uh, it phantom brake pretty really well for them. The phantom brake again right there. Like that type of braking behavior is potentially really dangerous because a car, I think that car behind me was following me closely and I probably thought I brake checked them. They were following me much closer, and now they're way back there. Uh, and my car did that first phantom brake, and I, it probably looked like I brake checked them. Uh, it's, if you're not careful and it phantom brakes like that, you can get rear-ended. So hopefully they have something that is watching the rear, and like, hey, if a car is close behind, like, be a little bit less likely to, like, false or brake for, like, whatever is in front, I guess. You know? At least right now, because it's feet. more often than not, it's going to break for something that's not there, and then potentially cause you to be rear-ended, which is never going to be your fault or the car's fault. Because if you, no matter if you do a panic brake and the person hits you, they're going to be at fault for following too closely. Which is, yeah, I don't think that should be how it is, but you know, it's, it's the way the world works, I guess. So right here, it needs to turn the blinker on, but it's not going to do it. I have to turn the blinker on myself every time. And maybe, let's, let's do the camera button, maybe it'll learn. Let's see how it does right here, if it's going to get in the wrong turn lane. Oh, the graphics frozen, that's odd. It's going far too fast in here. to get over now. There you go. Now turn left onto 6th Avenue West. See how it does here? It's gonna jam on the brake and turn. Am I and it's gonna speed up to 35 when it shouldn't. And it's gonna change right here. Here, there it goes. Okay, so it slowed too much for that car and now it's not reaccelerating quick enough. And again, there used to be a speed limit sign right here. It's something I really hope, Tesla guys, if you're watching, please adjust, like, work on adjusting speed limits next. Maybe speed limits don't change very often in California or something, I'm not sure. But here, they change all the time when you go in through town and around different roads and it goes up to 45, back down to 25, 
back to 35 and it changes all the time and to be able to adjust up and speed up and then slow down as the speed limits approach it's really important to overall smoothness and like for people want to use them like whoever is in the driver's seat is responsible for the car speeding or not is it gonna actually get over it's speeding it up so it actually get over um, yeah so it, adjusting speed for those situations are gonna uh, make it so the driver doesn't get a ticket or like so it's safer like in this case me getting uh, in front of that car like add a little bit of speed to change lanes and you can slow back down or something you know it doesn't need to like so aggressively uh, or not aggressively get over if you will not sure why oh no we're I'm pressing it through I'm not getting stuck at this light See, stuff like that is or false positives now turn oh. to 7th Avenue East. Okay, well, our navigation is completely wrong. I'm not sure. The nav point. Yeah, see, G, there's something wrong with navigation in this version, everyone. It's, for some reason, it doesn't really do a good job at... at um, pinpointing where I want it to go. So, I, when I did this point... I did it in all these parking lot right here. I did it on this parking parking lot. Actually, right here I did it. Um, but for some reason, I dropped the point here. I thought I wanted to go there for some reason more. I'm not sure why. If I wanted to go there, this would be right. But since I didn't want to go there, I, I'm not sure. But um, I am going to uh, go in real quick, and we'll be back out in a sec. Okay, let's see how this does, everyone. See if it'll actually let us, one, enable it. You hear that squeaking? I'm hoping, right hoping really badly. Um, I bought. Whoa, no, no! It definitely could not see there. And there's a car coming from the right, and it just wants to cut out in front of it. It's good to go now. <laughs> okay. In 500 feet. Which could be because, look, the GPS thought of his turning from there. The GPS accuracy plays a big role in how this how this functions. Because they're like, from here, I wanted to turn right, but I was turning left from here. So, like, that screws it up. There's something definitely weird going on with the GPS in the last, this update. They've changed something. But, yeah, what I was saying is I got... Call these a hybrid polypropylene hub needles. Basically, they're um, uh, livestock needles. It's a 22 gauge needle and a syringe. Basically, um, for the upper control arm, there's a little ball joint up there, and basically, you can inject oil. So, I'm just gonna, I have some 10W30 motor oil. The guide used uh, 03020 or 0W20. Uh, which is a little bit thicker um, But I think this should work actually no, it's a little bit more um, thin actually um, At these temperatures So this should be a little bit thicker, which I think is fine because I think you can actually just put grease into it But because I'm trying to inject it through a needle um, Grease probably wouldn't inject to what is okay. That's a disengagement It just it just completely gave up in the middle of that intersection I don't know, it didn't appear to be anything map data related. I don't, I think there's something wrong with the, it's on the wrong side of the road in the navigation data. I don't know if that's why or not. But yeah, it's, um, in terms of the route, I'm not gonna count that because you know it wasn't the right lane, like I said earlier. These are still disengagements in terms of the car messing up, but in terms of the route, in terms of what would actually be, in terms of historical data, they won't count. Um, but they're still definitely disengagements for something messing up with how the, the car is seeing the road and stuff.
That's wrong. That will definitely count as a disengagement. There's absolutely zero reason it should be getting out of this lane unless traffic was completely stocked up and there was like an accident or something in front. Well, okay, that's gonna be another disengagement. This, this, <laughs> there's something wrong with this version, everyone. It's, it's, this is not good. Uh, not good at all. Uh, I thought I thought it's gonna be have a good chance of zero disengagements, but why no? It's just messing up in the stupidest ways. This is like really silly. Um, like a decent chance I'll be. They wanted to go over two lanes, and there was a car next to me, so that's gonna be another disengagement. Like it's just not. It's doing really dumb stuff in this version. And like it's ironic that like this got released to more people because the earlier versions didn't do this. And so I'm not exactly sure what's causing it. Your guess is as good as mine. But it's, yeah, it's not, I, I, honestly it doesn't really matter because it's, it's still safe. But it's just, it's making silly mistakes that are really frustrating from the end user point of view. stuck behind that truck but I said you know what screw it we're just gonna go with the flow um so that probably took a couple extra minutes to get home than normal let's see how the last turn I only record all that just because it, it gives me it gives you guys a full recording and proof of how many disengagements are on this route versus you have people that speed up the rounds people who cut the video in between clips so it doesn't show the full picture Trust me, if anyone cuts the footage, they are skipping out on disengagements and interactions. Like that. Like I could have just skipped it. Like, oh, it's like, oh, it's fine the rest of the way home. It's not even gonna let me re-enable it. So I'm just gonna have to drive myself. So we're, that was a full disengagement there. So that's the thing. If anyone cuts the video, they're, it, whether they're purposely doing it or not, they are missing details that are important. So break tear, not as bad, but so break tear. Hey everyone, that's just, I don't know, maybe it's just, maybe today it's just not doing good. It was doing okay this morning, um, for the most part. Um, not anything worse, but this is, this is, wasn't great. Um, something, I, I think it has something to do with the nav and GPS data. Something is, again, relying too much on the map data to dry properly but yeah uh that is going to be the end of this one everyone if you have questions for me as always put them down below i appreciate watching i'll see you in the next one bye everyone